Significant TV, significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is Phil Harigi, chairman and CEO of Saver Systems Incorporated. Phil, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Fran. We were talking earlier about the power of entrepreneurship and how a person can start a business, one person business, and over time for it to grow. You've got an extremely powerful story, and I wanted to just take a step back and ask you, what were you thinking many, many years ago when you were a one-person business and then suddenly had a contract that allowed you to really work with four people and provide a series of services? Uh, thank you, Fran. It's uh, interesting that uh, I never thought uh, the company would be as successful as it is. Uh, today. So uh, Saver's first contract was for all of four people. I worked mm -hmm. out of uh, the bedroom closet of my son, uh, <laughs> which, uh, what a visual. I, which I outfitted with, uh, with an RJ11 phone line uh, oh, and, uh, and an old-fashioned uh, uh, PC. Uh, and uh, for me, success wasn't really measured by, you know, being a multimillionaire or having hundreds of people, you know, work for me. I would have just been happy to have been able to put uh, uh, food on the table, but uh, uh, we won that first contract and uh, I was very fortunate that the uh, first contract uh, you know, led to a second contract mm -hmm. and um, I would have been happy you know, with the company being at a certain level again, you know, just to, to make ends meet and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, put uh, food on the table for, for, for my family, but uh, the growth of the company really was spurred by necessity. Um, you know, people in the Philadelphia area may remember uh, when the Philadelphia Navy Yard uh, closed. Yes, and uh, absolutely. along with that closing was uh, the Navy customer up in Bucks County that uh, uh, oversaw research and development uh, for aircrafts. And they merged to a location down in Southern Maryland. So after uh, growing the company uh, to about 100, 125, uh, people in the uh, early to mid 90s it was announced that 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 base that navy facility was going to close and and, and move 200 miles to the south right. so uh, I, I could have done one of two things i could have either folded the business and just try to go find gainful employment somewhere mm -hmm. but I, I made the decision i guess the entrepreneurial decision to go to go uh, re establish the company uh, down in the in, in southern maryland so uh, today, uh, you know, we've uh, continued to grow. We went through some very painful times in the uh, um, early to mid '90s mm -hmm. with uh, with transferring a workforce from the Philadelphia area to the uh, Southern Maryland and metropolitan D.C. area. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, was very happy to have done it, and that's probably when I realized that I was a true entrepreneur. Okay, okay, and and now you have a company that you are chairman of. You recently sort of let go of a responsibility or transferred that responsibility, which is an important milestone in the development of a business. And so you're chairman and CEO, um, as well as being the founder of Saber Systems Incorporated. Share with me a little bit about what went into that decision to make that, that transfer of power. Yes, I think, uh you know, when you are a startup, uh, mm -hmm. almost by necessity, you have to sort of like be that one-armed paper hanger. Mm -hmm. You have to be all things. You have to be, you know, chief salesperson. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be the uh, human resources department. You have Absolutely. to be IT. You know, you uh, uh, back in the early days, I was actually still writing code. Oh, you my, know, goodness. So, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You had to wear a lot of different hats. I guess, fortunately, I was one of those individuals that uh, is uh, that maybe unlike some other entrepreneurs or young uh, uh, business people that I know that uh, I'm not a control freak and oh, I don't have this uh, okay. I don't have this need to micromanage. <laughs> so I, I think uh, you know as uh, one of the early inflection points, obviously, it is building a team, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and, and a lot of times the advice that uh, that entrepreneurs hear is uh, figure out what you're good at, mm -hmm. you know, and figure out, you know, what you like to do and then right. build your team uh, around those uh, around those strengths to, to fill in the gaps where, you know, where you're not so strong at. And I think, you know, really, you know, over time as the company has grown, 
uh, it was actually more more appropriate for me to really sort of like take a little bit of a hands-off approach mm -hmm. uh, with the business and not be running so much of the day-to-day -day operations, which I don't consider to be a strength, but uh, I like to consider myself sort of a, a brand ambassador mm, for the company. Absolutely. So I'm fairly active in both the Philadelphia and in the uh, DC markets, mm -hmm. just basically uh, you know, spreading the good word about the company, all the good stuff and the smart people that we have, and uh, and also looking for uh, partners. You know, right. one of the things that's the key to success in our business is finding both uh, small and large business uh, businesses to uh, to team with. So uh, that's also become a, a large part of my job. Well, let's let's talk about that. Share with the audience what you do. You, you do a lot of things, but share with the audience what you do and why, what your value proposition is in the marketplace. Because you are in two very different communities. You're based in D.C. and you're also based in the Philadelphia area. Yes, yeah, so our value proposition is a mid-tier uh, company, which means that you know, we're not among the smallest companies mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, that compete in our industry and those small companies, uh, which Saber was once uh, a, par a member of, uh, qualify for set aside contracts. The largest companies in our industry are the you know the titans of the of of, uh, of the Fortune 500. They include the Lockheed Martins, the Boeing's, the Northrop Grumman's, what have you. So we like to position ourselves uh, as sort of like the Goldilocks. We're not mm. too big. Ah. Uh, we're not too small, so right. in the sense that uh, we're big enough that we have uh, a lot of financial and operational stability, uh, but we also have a tremendous amount of uh, of uh, talented individuals. You know, we have a, we we do have some really uh, almost like world class uh, talent in terms of our scientists and engineers that we have on our staff. But then again, we're not so big. Um, that uh, you know, we, we can be very agile and nimble to respond to our customers' needs and to changes in, in, uh, in, in the world climate. Mm -hmm. And I think what makes us attractive to, uh, to talented individuals is the fact that they can come into our company, know that they are uh, backed by a financially sound and a, uh, mm -hmm. a stable company that's backed by a lot of uh, certified processes, but also that they'll come and be very impactful once they are here, that they are not going to be employee number 21,000 that mm. you know, maybe only has responsibility over a very narrow, uh, narrow domain. So they can come in here and be very impactful. So I like to uh, uh, say that uh, you know, we've been able to attract world-class talent and world-class leadership. Mm. I'm hearing ambassador, I'm hearing impact. In terms of impact, in your role as a founder and a CEO, um, you've had the ability to influence the entrepreneurial ecosystem in a lot of ways. Um, your company is one of the few, if, if not the only one, that has won the Philly 100, which recognizes the fastest growing companies um, multiple consecutive years in a row. Um, you also serve on boards that are dedicated to identifying and growing Philadelphia entrepreneurial talent. How does being a brand ambassador, being an entrepreneur, and influencing the entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem, how do all those things work together for you personally? Why does that matter? That's a great question. I think uh, I, I've been influenced uh, by a number of different factors in terms of my uh, philosophy and, and mm -hmm. values uh, mm -hmm. with respect to, to giving back and community service. I'm the son of two uh, physicians who mm -hmm. spent their lives and dedicated their lives uh, to, uh, to giving back and to serving uh, humanity. Uh, I was just very fortunate that with the business and its success that it provided me a platform to also give back, perhaps in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I've been very, uh, you know, sort of uh, struck and uh, rewarded by the success that I see not only among our own employees who mm -hmm. have grown professionally from being very junior, but over the years, you know, rising to uh, uh, senior executive positions with the company, 
But this uh, Philadelphia 100 program uh, that you mentioned was very influential early on in, in helping to, to brand the company. And I believe it's uh, still a record that uh, we hold the, uh, yes. um, you know, the, the, the record for number of consecutive appearance, appearances on the list, which is uh, seven. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, through the Philadelphia 100 program, I think that really helped to uh, put Sabre on the map uh, beyond the Philadelphia area, but also in the D.C. markets in which we, uh, we, we operate. And I got to meet a lot of other uh, young uh, entrepreneurs at the time, and many of them who've continued to have success, not necessarily with their, the same company, right, but right. some of them have become serial <laughs> entrepreneurs exactly. and uh, I've have got <laughs> on to, uh, to success with other company so right. I'm always one of those guys who uh, who uh, has a real thirst for learning and mm -hmm. I never have pretended to be one of those guys that uh, knows all the answers or, or uh, you know wants to be known as the smartest guy in the room mm -hmm. you know, for, mm -hmm. for most in most cases I'm actually hope I'm the, I'm the dumbest guy ah. in the room so I ask a lot of questions mm -hmm. and I've had the opportunity to really uh, you know, learn, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of, of things to do, maybe things not to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at this stage uh, of, of where I am personally and professionally, I'm in a position, you know, where I can, you know, really look, you know, give back and look back and uh, be involved with working with these entrepreneurial programs. So there's the Entrepreneurs Forum. Mm -hmm. uh, this past year, I was the program chair for the Philadelphia 100. And it's really great just to see the enthusiasm and excitement of uh, CEOs and owners bringing their teams mm -hmm. to celebrate uh, entrepreneurship in general and, and also their, their own, in, uh, their own uh, individual successes. And uh, I've extended, you know, I guess my, uh, my enthusiasm toward uh, uh, fostering uh, entrepreneurship by becoming involved with a nonprofit called uh, NIFTY, Network yes. for Teaching yes. Entrepreneurship, which actually brings entrepreneurship programs into the inner city schools, mm -hmm. so that uh, you know the products of our school system, you know, have uh, have a goal and they have uh, relatable uh, role models mm -hmm. uh, for when they uh, hopefully uh, graduate. You know, mm -hmm. so that uh, you know, I think there's a general sense that well, gee, if you know you don't. Or if you're not lucky enough to be a, you know, NCAA scholarship athlete uh, prospect, you know, what am I? You know, what 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 chance do I really have? So we give these kids an opportunity to see, you know, what is possible with their lives. In terms of what is possible, what do you see next for Saber Systems Inc? Well, we want to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, the last couple of years, uh, the federal uh, climate has been. Uh, challenging, obviously, mm -hmm. with a new administration, it remains to see, to be seen. Uh, you know what national priorities uh, will be. So uh, within uh, the federal sector, which in which we're uh, in which we're uh, predominantly operating, mm -hmm. uh, we've always been sort of aligned around national priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, you know we're we're known as a defense contractor, but you know we have evolved and diversified. Uh, to uh, where we are supporting uh, the Department of Commerce, we support the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Homeland Security, we've uh, supported the Drug Enforcement Administration mm -hmm. in the past. So we're diversifying within the civilian agencies. But one of the things I, I would really like to do is, uh, you know, as even though we're headquartered here mm -hmm. uh, with operations predominantly in the Beltway, it's always been my uh, my wish and dream to to really have a strong uh, commercial pro you know, commercial operation mm -hmm. here in Philadelphia and bring some of the world class talent expertise that we've uh, developed, you know, in the federal sector to to mainstream America. Mm -hmm. So that's an initiative that we started uh, earlier this year. Excellent, excellent. Philadelphia, I just had the opportunity to um, interview a number of folks from the city of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a great place to work and live and grow a business. And so I really commend you for the work that you're continuing to do, not only within your company, um, but involving other entrepreneurs. Um, it, leadership, um, you, you mentioned learning. Learning and leadership go hand in hand. Yes. And that is significant and really appreciate the contribution that you're making. Oh, thank you, Fran. Thank you. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. Sabre Systems, Inc. You mentioned earlier that you're a graduate of Notre Dame. Yes. And I know that is with pride yes. that you serve and with pride that you lead. 
Thank you for watching Significant TV.